Well, welcome everyone. I see it's 202 and I do want to mention as an aside, we are recording. Um, we've been pretty diligent about uh, making sure to crop out any personal information. Um, but yeah, just do please remember that we are recording. Um, it's our last session. I'm so glad that you made it. And I'm so glad that everyone has been coming this whole time. It's just really been a delight to get to know you um, over these Zooms. And I um, appreciate your, your presence, all of you. So welcome. Um, today, some of you were here yesterday and it's um, very similar content. We're talking about uh, entertainment and uh, using our devices for diversion. <laughs> and um, but there's a few different things. We're going to talk about casting um, today and uh, um, some different ways to kind of use your phone uh, or tablet for, for games. So let's dive right in. So yes, yeah, CPA Connect School of Technology, intermediate level, week eight for mobile, mobile devices. Um, we've talked, we've been to YouTube, we've talked about YouTube um, a lot, uh, but it is a place where you can find a, a, a video about just about anything. So, and you can publish too for free. They do have some guidelines on how that works, but uh, you could certainly put your content out there to the world if you are so inclined. But yeah, it's a great resource, not just for sort of fun things, watching, uh, you know, music videos or, or humor, or there's films on there, but uh, tutorials. If you have something that breaks around the house, Try looking it up on YouTube. I bet you there is a tutorial on YouTube about how to fix whatever your problem is. There's just seems to, I rarely stumped, rarely stumped YouTube. Um, games on your phone. There's, there's more out there than Angry Birds and Candy Crush. <laughs> um, there, and, uh, New York Times has a very nice selection of adult games. Uh, talked about this yesterday. Uh, they have a crossword spelling bee, a game called Tiles, and another that's called Vertex, which is like a, an adult connect the dots. Um, and they're, they're really good. Um, you do have to have a subscription to the Times to access those. Um, and these are uh, some others that are, are listed here are recommended as ways to kind of keep those synapses firing. Um, playing games is, uh, is recommended, sorry to use the word twice, but um, to keep your mind sharp. Um, uh, so I, I would encourage, check out some of these word games or um, Sudoku, all these kind of Things. And, and to me, I, I, I could see like solitaire or a game like that on, uh, on the computer, on the laptop, but it seems to me like the touch screen with your tablet or your phone is, gives a lot of ease for um, playing games on a device. So I kind of think of my phone as a place that I would tend to do something like that. These streaming services, we had some good conversation about um, the content that's provided yesterday. So hopefully uh, we'll have some as well again today. And if anyone has a question or a comment, please do just dive right in. Um, I cannot see the screen when I'm in um, the presentation mode. So just unmute and dive right in. But um, these streaming services, for a monthly fee, and sometimes they have a, a yearly that's a little bit of a discount, um, but but it's a it's a monthly fee, generally speaking, to access copywritten content. There's um, podcast for streaming, there's music for streaming, um, and there's uh, film and TV, um, and some of those 
are, are free. There's a lot of free podcasts that you can find. Um, you can, when you have the service, you can download the content to your device to uh, look at or listen to at a later time. Um, and you also, you can download it to use it offline. Um, but the thing to remember about it, um, even for content that you've downloaded, uh, once you don't have the subscription anymore, you don't have access to it. Uh, the way that I kind of think of a streaming service is that you're, you're kind of renting the content. You never actually own it outright. You only have uh, access to it when you um, have the subscription. Licensing laws do still apply for public broadcast, something to remember. Um, and sometimes you can find services sort of uh, bundled together for a little bit of a discount than paying for each one a la carte. So this is a list of some podcasts. Um, I know we, we talked about some of this yesterday. Um, uh, but I'm more inclined to listen to a podcast on my phone than on my computer personally, um, kind of stick my earbuds in and, and keep going. But um, there's, a, there's a podcast out there for anything that you're interested in. I know that um, I mentioned several times yesterday about if you're a person who you know, traditionally has liked to listen to NPR. Um, I think that you would really enjoy podcasts. And I would say that that also applies, you know, if you're a, a WTAM fan, uh, that if you, if you like talk radio, you, you would like podcasts, because that's basically what it is, is someone talking, there's not really a visual. Um, but yeah, you could do a Google search on any topic you can think of, and I bet you there's a podcast out there about it. And these are some providers. Apple Podcasts is the, the built-in for um, Apple devices, and that's free, and so is Google Podcasts also are free. Um, these others, I, I don't know uh, individually if they're free or not. Some of them have a, a subscription price, and, and some of them have can, are, are free. So also, a lot of podcasts are just sort of generally available across Apple and Google um, and free to the public. Some are, are um, proprietary content. Uh, Spotify has some podcasts. Um, there's been a one of note lately that was a collaboration between um, Bruce Springsteen and President Obama. Um, and that's that's a podcast that can only be found on Spotify. So, how they get you. <laughs> um, there's a lot of music streaming services. Um, Amazon Music is available with a, a Prime subscription uh, for an additional fee. Uh, Apple Music kind of uh, replaced iTunes. Uh, um, and it they say that it works on um, some supporting devices that are not Apple products, but I've also read that it can be kind of glitchy if it's not a Mac or an Apple product, an iPhone. So um, yeah, just something to think about. Pandora was kind of one of the first music streaming services. Uh, um, Pandora is kind of unique in that you put in your, the, the artist that you know you like, and then it plays for you um, things that are similar. So uh, if you maybe don't know um, too, too many, different groups or people that you'd like to listen to, but you'd like to find some more. Um, Pandora can be a good choice if you are, you know, are interested to just find out more about a genre. Um, uh, Spotify, really large library. Um, and it also, it has music and podcasts. So that's, if you're into the podcast, that can be a nice choice. Um, a lot of these, have a free version uh, in which you will have the pleasure of listening to commercials <laughs> in between the content. So, but uh, it, it's nice that it's still um, available. YT Music, YouTube Music is, um, has a unique feature in that uh, if there's a video on YouTube for the song that you're looking for, uh, you can watch that inside of the player. Um, 
the inside of the app uh, for YT Music. So you can listen to the just the, you can just listen or you can watch. They have like a little tab that slides over. You can choose. Um, so, and they have a free version as well. Um, I just there, there was one yesterday. I couldn't remember what it was. I wanted to mention to you. I don't know if you're familiar with it. iHeart Radio. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever use that one? I I I, I have it on my phone and. It's kind of nice. It plays uh, music similar to Pandora, I thought. The other thing that I find terrific, because I love classical music, is that PNR has a website that you could load. It's an app you could load on your phone. It looks like... I, I'm not good at this, but it... I mean, you could load it on. It's just PNR. And you can get um, WCLV, the classical music station, on the internet, streaming, as opposed to tr trying to listen to it on the radio. Since they moved their transmission to the far west side somewhere, transmission on the east side, where I think we all live, is just horrible. Huh. But uh, it's great on the internet. I mean, I listen to it when I'm traveling. Because you can get all anywhere in the country. It can be anywhere. Yeah, but PNR is really nice because it offers a lot of different things, and and you can listen to other radio stations also. You just have to look for them. There's a hunt you can do for radio stations. So just thought I'd add that. Thank you so much for sharing about those resources. Um, I was not familiar with PNR, and I I kind of forgot about iHeartRadio. That's a that's so a you can check out like any radio station on there and yeah. you can also uh uh you know find individual artists and and groups so yeah thanks for mentioning those some more options there's something out there for everybody <laughs> jump back in here Um, someone, something that someone else mentioned yesterday was Alexa uh, for playing music. Also, is the the thing that's kind of nice about Alexa is that it's voice activated, right? So um, you can just tell her uh, what to play, and and she'll play it for you. So that can be kind of nice if someone has trouble um, with uh, manipulating uh, the 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 device. Um, physically with their hands, or um, if someone has, um, you know, maybe has some forgetfulness and it's challenging to remember exactly how to go to it, um, that can be a nice option because it it's the voice control with Alexa. So, you know, I don't know how apt people will be to watch uh, film and TV, uh, particularly on a phone, I have, but it, that's like just by myself, you know, it's hard to sh look at with a, more than one other person on a phone, I think, uh, to watch a movie or something like that. But um, on a tablet, I could definitely see, you know, the iPad or a tablet doing um, the watching a, a, a video or a film. Um, these are all different services here that provide content. A lot of it is proprietary. Um, and so that's why, you know, some people like to get those bundles so you can get more than one service. Another thing that I've um, heard other people do is in a family group, you know, each person takes responsibility for paying for one of the services and then sharing passwords. Um, definitely a common thing I've heard people do. Some of them have commercials. Uh, Hulu has commercials even sometimes for the content that you pay for. So sometimes you can't get away from it. Um, but there's lots of different options and it's kind of, you know, if you, you just kind of, kind of, you, you kind of have to see what each individual service offers. Um, if you're a big outdoor person and you, you like all that kind of uh, 
stuff like that, documentaries like that about the natural world, uh, Disney Plus might work well for you because they have um, all of the National Geographic content. Um, HBO has a lot of those blockbusters. YouTube TV uh, has the, the big four channels and PBS in most markets. Obviously, you need to check and see, you know, what's available in your individual area. But for the most part, that's how you can get those standard TV channels, uh, CBS, ABC, um, NBC, and Fox. And then wanted to just mention um, about the on-demand video and the cloud-based. I see that my my slide here, the, the icon is kind of our, our little icon for community partnership is covering up some of my wording. I apologize, I'll fix that after. Um, On-demand video is when you have a subscription to a service and um, so you, you're paying that flat rate for, and there's some free content, but then they'll generally have some films that you have to pay for. So if it's anywhere from 99 cents to I, like about 3.99 is generally what I've seen. Um, you, you have to pay for that one time viewing a little extra fee. And of course they'll do that with new films or something that's really popular. Um, but yeah, that's, that's on-demand video. And then the cloud-based DVR is very similar to like what you have um, on your, the physical DVR so that you can record content. Um, but because it's cloud-based, you have a larger capacity um, for storage as well as for recording things uh, at the same time, multiple things at the same time. So um, that that's what, <laughs> like I said yesterday, I, I kind of have to laugh when I look at some of this stuff. It's like, uh, by the time I record all these things, like I don't even know when I would have time to watch them all. But yeah, you know, it's it can be a nice diversion. Of course, we all like to watch a film every now and then. So one of the main things that you can do with your phone particularly is what's called casting. Um, you your TV has to be compatible with casting. Um, so a smart TV, um, and for, I'm gonna try to explain this to the best of my ability. I am not any kind of expert on these matters, but um, the smart TV, TV has a port on it that's HDMI and it needs to have that compatibility to be able to use the, the to use this um, method. Um, it also will use a Wi-Fi connection. So you'll need to have Wi-Fi in the home, which I think most people do, but um, there's a uh, Chromecast is Google's uh, device that has kind of become like a big casting device. And it has this thing, it's called a dongle that you um, sort of plug into that port, the HDMI port. Um, and it, it enables the TV to catch the cast. <laughs> um, and and you, you, so you, you have the content on your phone. And then with this, when you get the, the device hooked up through this dongle, um, or one of these other, the Fire Stick or the Roku, um, then you can see, project that content that's on your phone onto the television. Um, and it's a little bit different. There's another thing that's called screen mirroring that does a, a similar sort of thing, but with screen mirroring, whatever's on your phone is what shows on the TV. So if a call came in or you wanted to try to send a text, it would interrupt that. Um, with the casting, it doesn't. And you can still use your phone as your phone while you're casting. So it's kind of nice. Um, this native casting is more of a manual process between the two devices, but it works the best if they're of the same make. Um, and this little icon, down here in the corner is what appears on the screen if you have the ability to cast whatever the content is on your phone. 
And then I would just tell everyone to remember my line. How do I cast from my blank, in my case, a Galaxy S9, to my whatever type of TV you have? Um, Google search that to get explicit directions. And then also, you know, your, your enabling device, be that Chromecast, uh, Fire Stick, Roku. Um, Apple also has a little adapter um, that I can't remember the name of right now. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Um, oh, geez. Well, I think you get the idea. Does anyone have, I'm so sorry. Does anyone have a question about casting? I'll, I'll, I'll just note something uh, while you're maybe getting your head together. I, I, I noted some time ago that on the YouTube app on the phone, that icon is at the top of the screen. And I have actually used it to cast to my TV something uh, that I, I didn't have access to from from my Roku on my TV. It's a it's um it's pretty cool I, that YouTube recognizes that people <laughs> want to see something on a bigger screen and make, make they make it easily ac accessible right by by putting that icon right right on the phone the screen on the phone. At least I, I'm looking at mine now. I just confirmed it again. I just pulled it up as well, and it is on my phone. It's right across the top. There's yeah. um, there's four different sort of things across the top there. There's the cast icon, the notification bell, the magnifying glass for your search, and then my little my login. It has my little picture for my login. Yeah, yeah that's mine exactly. So yeah. it's kind of cool. it's kind of cool that they do that. I mean, it's must be pretty standard. I mean, users probably use that a lot you know experience users i bet they use it a lot you know um i i know mel when you were on here yesterday you you had um some good information about uh using the the fire stick um and the roku um mm -hmm. and i kind i don't i i have to, to honestly i don't know much about these things i was saying yesterday I, I don't personally own a television and i don't i haven't really used those but I'm looking into it, um, the casting mechanism and using the Fire Stick or the Roku for it, you, it's, it's like, it's that intermediary device that, uh, I don't know how to explain it, catches the, it, for, through the internet, it like catches the inter information and then pushes it on to the TV. I see you unmuted, Mel. Do you have anything to say about that? Oh, well, I was saying that most of the apps, those apps you might have on your phone are already on the Fire Stick. So basically, once you put your passcode in, it opens right up. So as long as you have the internet service, you can view it on that device. Yes, a lot of the the different content apps are pr like loaded into the Fire Stick and or the Roku, but there's some things that aren't. And for those that aren't, you can use that device as the intermediary between mm -hmm. the TV and the phone for the and content. I watch, it isn't I watch some things and they ask me if I want to watch it on the, on the Fire Stick. Okay. You know, so I might be looking at some and Gwen go, I want to see that too. So it'll, it'll ask me, do you want to watch this on the Fire Stick? And then you tell it, yeah, no, and they'll be able to watch it on the Fire Stick. So it just like pops up like a little dialogue box and right. asks okay because it's aware that i have a fire stick so it's asked me if i want to watch it on a bigger screen now one thing i did notice with hbo max we had a tough time getting that on the fire stick that was on the phone an hour and a half with at and but once we got it on the fire stick it was okay but now when i look at it in my phone it's like wait a minute they want me to put my passcode in all over again yes huh. me too. That was interesting huh so i'm wondering if, if we just gave it the opportunity just to be on the fire stick and not on the phone anymore like what happened with that? Hmm. You say you have the same situation, Art. Yeah, it seems like uh, 
HBO doesn't have its internet uh, operation straight. It seems to be more. It seems to be more of a television-oriented uh, operation right now because it is a pain. How, how did you join you know, uh, HBO? The HBO, I got it through um, AT and T. Yeah, me too. So I had it on AT and T, but if you where well, I have a streaming device, you can watch those movies on that streaming device. Right. What was happening on my phone? I had HBO, uh, the regular HBO. Yes, it's HBO Max. Right, and and HBO Max is far superior to HBO. Right. Now here's, here's something weird. It opened up. It did open. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe they, maybe they, uh, before I asked you for my password. <laughs> maybe they fixed it. Because I know that they were having problems with it. Maybe that's what uh, it was. Yeah. No, HBO Max is terrific. The only problem I have, there are certain shows that I like, you know, my wife and I like to watch that like every Friday night, um, what's his name? Comedian. Oh, can't think of his name off the top of my head. But Bill Maher. Every Friday night, he has a show, and if you're watching TV, HBO, it's there. 10 o'clock, it's there. If you're watching HBO Max, sometimes you could find it at 10, sometimes you could find it at 10, 15. Sometimes mm -hmm. you might have to wait until the next day, but, yeah. but you always get it. Uh, it's not quite as, they don't quite have their act together, HBO. But, yeah, well, some apps like like Tina will be watching a program. Let's say tomorrow, last night she watched it, but I wouldn't be able to watch it until the next day because they don't stream it on the other devices, on the other networks until the next day. Yeah. yeah. You, just, you just have to wait a day. Or they'll advertise. The fire circle say this, this movie Kung Fu is coming out, this new Kung Fu movie they have with the young lady in it. It's coming on Wednesday, but it's on, H on Hulu on Thursday. Well, the problem that they're facing is they, they're trying to figure out how to get people interested in movies so that when the theaters open up, they'll get people back in the theaters. But right now, there's some movies that theater type movies you could watch on these services. You know, HBO Max do that. They keep yeah. Days. yeah, well, Hulu does too. Actually, there was one movie on Hulu, and 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 uh, Netflix also does. Mm -hmm. But Netflix, they, they have their own production company. They they do more movies than anybody. It's uh, well, I shouldn't say that because uh, Amazon Prime does a lot of movies. Yeah, they do. They, Rebecca, so I have a question. Yes. Good. <laughs> um. Next, when is the last advanced class and what is it? The next advanced class, and it's not the last one, but it, it's um, the fourth Thursday. And I don't know that date, right? I'm, I can look it up though. Um, it's the fourth Thursday and this month, it's about uh, reading uh, devices like your Kindle um, and other devices like that. So can you put the sign up in the chat like you did the last time? I think I'm pretty sure that we can. I can't sure if Carolyn hears us. Um, but if not, then um, I can definitely send it out as an email after. So let me. Do we have to sign up for each individual one? Because I did sign up for one. No, once you're signed up, you're just, you're signed up and you'll get the oh. link. So. Okay, I signed up for um, the cloud. Yeah. So I will get all the advanced class links in. Yes, yes. I have a question. I was gonna say, oh, please go ahead. Um, if you have Hulu, then you can get Discovery, right? Isn't it all in one or something like that? I don't know. They were advertising Hulu and Discovery Plus at the same time. You can get the one package or something like that. Um, if you has Hulu, can you upgrade to with the Disney Channel or Discovery? If you, 
if you have Disney, they have one of uh, one of the good channels similar to Discovery. I can't remember which one. But I think if you have Hulu, you can upgrade. Uh, you can get this. Discovery. Discovery is just one of the more than sixty-five channels that come with Hulu Plus Live TV. Okay. You got to have the live TV, and then you gain access to the big four: ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC. Mm -hmm. um, lifestyle channels like TLC, HD TV, and the Food Network. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not the basic Hulu; it's the Hulu Plus Live. So if we have Hulu, how can we upgrade to the? I think it's the Disney Channel. The Disney. But, no, 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 no. She's talking about Hulu Plus. It, they're always trying to make more money. Hulu is probably what you have and I have. The Disney Channel has <laughs> National Geographic. Right, but That's, isn't it somehow you can you can upgrade the Hulu to that? No. It, it's the okay. Hulu. The Hulu upgrade gives you Discovery, not Disney. Not Disney. That's separate. Not, okay. not Disney. Yeah, Disney is its own separate. And that's what I, when you were talking, Mel, about the, uh, it releases on one on Wednesday and then and the next on Thursday, it'll be on the other. I feel like that's a part of their sort of racket. Like it's like a money making ploy. Like there are some people who won't want to wait. And right. so they don't pony up to have, you know, that other service. And I feel like that is is part of why they do that. Um, and I also wonder about HBO's, what you were talking about art with their sort of like missteps around um, providing the content. And I wonder if it's related to protecting the content. You know, um, I think, oh, here it's in the chat, that link if anyone needs it. Um, uh, I think the problem with, I'm having with, with uh, HBO is that they have so many categories to look for content that yeah, sometimes yeah. I don't remember where I found the updated because they have current showing and your favorites and all these different categories. And sometimes I get it confused with one of the other ones I'm, I watch. But I'll yeah, tell you, yeah. you, you know, N Disney is the one to watch out for because if they make money with their streaming service, they're going to be one, they're going to buy all these other ones out i think eventually yeah. but i don't know how well they're doing i mean they only they haven't expanded at all but if you have grandkids it's a great one to have because their content for children is is fantastic yeah. they have every star wars anything anything having anything to do with star wars in fact that's one of the the groupings that they have but it's nice to have National Geographic. That's a terrific uh, yeah. uh, service. Some of the stuff they have is just magnificent. Yeah, it's really good content. One thing I wanted to mention before I forget that back to the casting. Um, one thing that I saw over and over in what I read was that your phone and your TV need to be on the same Wi-Fi connection when you're doing that. And that was kind of like the first step in every every process that I looked at about it. And, and some of the other things too, including like with the Fire Stick and the Roku, um, same, make sure everything is on the same Wi-Fi connection or it's not gonna work. So just a little troubleshoot there um, if anybody's trying to do that. Um, this is the end of my, of my slide presentation. Um, I would love to hear anything that anyone has to say about any of the stuff that we've talked about. And I would also love to field a question if anyone has a, a question about something they're trying to do, even if it's unrelated to what we're talking about today. Um, 